Hello again, this is Gil Robles, and I'm going to be doing a self-portrait in Sketchbook Pro. And uh, before I start, I just want to go through some of the brushes that they have here. And uh, these, a lot of these brushes are uh, are good. I, I um, like this one in particular, which is the coarse angular brush, because it gives you a kind of dry brush. And uh, um, the other brushes, really, and I'll show you them in a moment, are kind of like uh, these wet oily brushes they they kind of pick up or lift out the white background and they mix in with the white background so you gotta keep uh, stroking it just to to get rid of it and the angular brush does it but not as much and uh, if you you know what I like about it is that uh, the angular brush um, gives you that like I said that dry brush feeling you're actually dragging the color over the um the the surface so i enjoy it it's it's easier to control and to build up especially when you use layers this is a brush that i use for inking it has no special name it's just brush number two on the palette and i'm using just the brushes that are on the palette with the uh, the presets at uh, this one i actually changed some of the presets so that i can use it as an ink brush but um the other brushes I'm not changing any of the presets I'm just using what comes with uh, the program and uh, another video I'll probably show how you can uh, make your own brushes on this program and uh, change uh, the presets and uh, or, or like I said even create a brand new brush a custom made brush and put it on your palette uh, but I'm just using the choices that are in front of us on when you get the program there's also these uh these kind of neat uh texture brushes on the bottom i don't use them much but uh like i said for this demonstration this is what i'm going to be using the uh, angular coarse brush no and uh what i'm going to be doing is i'm um this is not a a video demonstrating a how to paint a portrait um, I hope you can pick up some things from it but uh, what I'm going to do is just to show how using these uh, this, or this particular brush you can actually make it look like uh, an oil painting or a, I, I like painting something uh, not as uh, as clean and smooth as it's been airbrushed like a, a lot of digital paintings I like it to look like an oil painting I like the strokes to show for it to look kind of coarse um, so that it can look uh, I don't I hate to use terms like impressionistic or things like that because that's not what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to be the best me that I can um, but uh, I like showing that an artist has been here that an artist placed these strokes that uh, it's not smoothed out uh, trying to look uh, just too clean and too airbrushed I put uh, just the initial background layer on a separate uh, layer and then uh, start uh, painting on top of it and what I'll do is that I'll keep creating layers and uh, most of the time I'm just merging them down after I'm finished with it uh, either like this one I, I kind of leave the opacity at where it is and I'll just uh, keep adding stuff to it um, and then I'll move it down and in other layers like this one what I'll do is that I'll uh, decrease the opacity and so it will feel like you're you're glazing color over another and this is good when uh, you know if uh, the painting is uh, either too warm too much into the red or something you want to introduce some blues or some greens or some cooler colors or whatever or just to glaze the color to, to make a change in it you know and, and this one I'm just uh, adding a, another layer to paint into the background mm, um, yeah because what I did was actually make the background a little bit more cooler
Now, of course, I don't paint this fast. I speed this video up at about four times the speed. Actually, it's going a lot faster than that, but. And there's the finished painting. Please join me in my blog at artinabusyworld.blogspot.com. Thank you.